Hey yo, what's going on everyone? Nathan here. So, companies are very good at locking you into their ecosystems, and this is true for a bunch of them. Whether you're Xbox or PlayStation, Apple or Samsung, or Windows or Mac OS, whichever one you kind of go to first tends to be the one that you stay with for a while, and the companies make it very hard to jump ships. Well, for me personally, I have gone through the transition of switching from a Windows laptop, the Surface Book 2, which I had all throughout college, to a Mac OS system, which is my brand new MacBook Pro. And so after switching now for about a month and really kind of getting to know the new system, there have been 10 pretty big differences that I've noticed just day-to-day -day use between the two, both good and bad on the Mac OS side and Windows side. And so if you're thinking about switching yourself, I'm gonna run through those 10 differences to hopefully help you get a better idea what the transitional period is like. And so let's get right into that. So the first difference I wanna talk about that I noticed right out of the box with both of these devices is the reliability. So if you look over here, so I know this laptop is five years old. If you look over here though, it will just continue to reboot itself and restart for absolutely no reason. It is plugged in right now, by the way, charging, and it's just gonna keep resetting throughout this whole video. So if you see that, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. It's just messed up. Anyway, off that side tangent. So yes, this is about five years old now, but even from day two, if I remember of owning this, it would give me a very difficult time of even turning on. I would press and hold down the power button and it just wouldn't start. And I would have to like soft reset it by holding the power and the volume up button for like 15 seconds and then it would finally boot up. So reliability between these two laptops really does play a huge difference in what I've already noticed. As for the MacBook Pro, I've only had it for a month it's a brand new device, so yes, it's gonna run flawlessly right now, but I have family members who've had MacBook Pros for like six, seven years now, and yes, they're getting slower with the software as all kinds of applications just keep getting better and need more power to run, but it always turns on for them, and there's really no huge headaches when it comes to that, and this one right here, I blame some of it, at least on the Windows operating system, it's just not very reliable. And so that's the first thing that I really noticed between these two devices. So now the second difference that I noticed kind of right away between the two softwares is how you activate the secondary click or the right click if you have a mouse with these operating systems. For the longest time, my brain has been trained to go down to the bottom right hand corner of the trackpad to activate the right click or the secondary click. And so without even giving Apple's solution to this, which is a two finger tap or press, I went right into the system preferences and I changed this to click on the bottom right hand corner of the trackpad because I was so scared to kind of like give a new system, you know, like a shot because I was just so like trained to go into the bottom right hand corner to activate the secondary click. <laughs> but it really didn't take me long to find out why Apple's secondary click is the two finger touch because their trackpad is so large. Like it became cumbersome to move like my entire arm down to the bottom right hand corner especially if I'm like laying down and typing, like moving my whole arm is a lot more than just like moving my wrist like what it was in the Surface Book 2. And so comparing this to the Surface Book 2, there's a real difference between the two. And when it comes to using it, this difference really does show through. And so just after a few days of having the bottom right hand corner be my secondary click, I switched back to the two finger touch and I don't think I'll go back. It is honestly great being able to secondary click from anywhere on the trackpad instead of just at the bottom right hand corner. So yes, I know that Surfaces and Windows laptops do have the option for a double tap, but their default is the bottom right hand corner. And so that's just like what I left it on. You know, I'm just an average user. I'm not like a professional like computer user. So I just had it on that. Tried it on the MacBook, didn't like it, and now I actually prefer the two finger touch. So now the third biggest difference that I realized from switching from a Windows laptop to a Mac is the keyboard and oh my God, the keyboard on the Mac is so great. I know this is all personal preference, but I love the Magic Keyboard on the newer MacBook Pros. The keys are so responsive and there's just something so satisfying about typing with this keyboard. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the Surface Book 2 has a bad keyboard. It actually has a pretty great keyboard if you're asking me, especially for a Windows laptop. But I personally just don't think it matches up to the feeling of typing on this MacBook Pro. And that is just another little something that I noticed between these two laptops. So now the fourth difference that I really noticed between switching operating softwares is Apple's ecosystem. And let me tell you, when I say I'm deep in it, like <laughs> I'm 
deep in the Apple ecosystem now. Like the laptop was the last thing that was keeping like my foot slightly out the door of it. Everything else up until this laptop purchase was always Apple. From my phone, I have an iPad, my AirPods, my Apple Watch. This was like my only device keeping me out the door. And now since I've fully switched over, it's been kind of great, you know, having like a laptop now with all of my other products and they all just work so seamlessly together. From being able to read and respond to messages directly on my laptop to picking up FaceTime calls, airdropping videos and photos and files from my iPhone straight to my laptop without having to send them through email first, which was always such a headache from my phone or iPad to get them to my laptop. Just the whole email process of uploading them, sending the email, going to my email on my laptop, downloading them from there. Like now it's literally just find the file, airdrop, boom, it's right there on your other device. And it is amazing. It's such a time saver. I always knew I was missing something with the ecosystem by not having a laptop by Apple. And now that I have it, the laptop is like the parent of the ecosystem. And then like the iPads, like the older brother, the iPhones, like the younger sister, the Apple Watch is like the baby. And so I was missing like the whole base of the ecosystem. And now that I have it, I don't know if I'll be able to leave again. Don't get me wrong, I'll try other products, but this, just how everything works together is honestly amazing. And I just didn't have that functionality with the Surface Book 2. So I know that almost everything so far up to this point has been in Apple's favor, but don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. So transitioning into Mac OS, one of the huge things that I found I really didn't like about it is their multitasking or honestly like lacking thereof. With Windows, I really liked how simple and easy it was to just take a tab or an application and drag it on one side of the screen where it would snap into place. And if I had more than two applications running, it would split the screen up into four quadrants, which I honestly used a lot while studying or doing homework. With macOS, on the other hand, you have to move them separately and then adjust them to the size that you want. And this just takes longer and it's not very accurate or precise to do it like this. I know with the upcoming macOS Ventura, they're going to have Stage Manager finally, which looks like an improvement to their multitasking capabilities. But currently right now, I do not like it at all. And I really do prefer the Windows multitasking system over Apple's. So now the sixth difference that I've really noticed in switching to macOS is having that little control feature toggle at the top right of the menu bar. This little feature is so convenient as it has very small but frequently used settings right there for quick adjustments. One of the most annoying things about Windows is that anytime I wanted to like connect some Bluetooth speakers or my headphones to them, I would have to go to start, settings, Bluetooth and devices and then connect it, which just always seemed like a long process. Now on Mac, all I have to do is click on the control center and the Bluetooth option is right there. And especially with having AirPods, this is just so quick and I really do like having this control feature. Not only with just the Bluetooth settings, but Wi-Fi, keyboard brightness and focus modes are right up there. So I can go right to the top right corner, turn on do not disturb, and then I can work on video editing without anyone bothering me. And I just really like having the little control center right there for quick access to a bunch of different settings. So the seventh difference comes from like an internal commitment I made to myself when switching laptops. And that was I wanted to start using more keyboard shortcuts to really help to speed up my workflow. And with this, I found Spotlight Search. So Spotlight Search is only in Mac OS and you pull this up by pressing command in the space bar. This is such a useful tool as I can quickly search anything about my laptop or in the settings itself. And I can even do web searches from any sort of application that I'm currently on as it'll pop up over on top of that. I can type in math into it, ask it questions, and it pulls it right up super quick. And I love this. It really helps me like find specific things that I need to and just having it right there with just two buttons away instead of pulling up Internet Explorer or Safari and then Googling it itself, just right there, super quick and easy. And I'm a huge fan of Spotlight Search. So now the eighth difference is the softwares that you can get and that come with each device and more specifically, Final Cut Pro. So for the past year, I've edited all my videos using my iPad and a software called LumaFusion. And when I knew I was going to be getting a new laptop, I did a lot of research into which editing software I wanted, and it came down to either Final Cut Pro 10 or Premiere Pro. And honestly, a large part of my decision was the price. So I got Final Cut Pro 10 
in like a student creative bundle for $200. And it also came with four other applications like motion, compressor, and two others. It has all the exact same features and there's no limitations versus the original $300 price. And comparing this to the Adobe Premiere Pro, this would have costed me about $260 each year and that's just like too much money so the price was like a no-brainer to me and also the magnetic timeline in final cut pro 10 is something that i really wanted to use and stick with as lumafusion also had a magnetic timeline so i figured that the transition from lumafusion to final cut pro would have been easier and quicker to use and just touching on some of the other applications that come pre-installed with the mac you get iMovie and GarageBand pre-installed in it and the Windows one is already lacking a whole bunch of applications and just to even like pull up Word or PowerPoint you have to go to Microsoft itself and download them and they don't come pre-installed so just the applications itself and what you get with each of them the Mac is definitely better and has more variety with it. So the ninth difference is closing applications and I really prefer Windows over the Mac in this specific instance right here. What's weird is Apple's always been known for their simplicity and ease of use and kind of clean formats. But on the dock, when you close out very specific apps, not all of them to be fair, but certain ones, it'll go down to the dock and then there's a little dot at the bottom saying that it's still active. And I wish that when you press the red X at the top left corner to actually close the application, like not just like you're minimizing it with the little yellow button, I wish it would completely close and not give me that dot at the bottom as it just like makes me feel a little cluttered and I really like having my desktop empty and clean. So what you have to do is open up the application again and then you have to secondary click on the application in the dock and then go to quit to really fully close out the application. While in Windows, all it is is just pressing the little red X at the top left hand corner and then it's completely closed. It removes it from the dock. So I like how Windows does it more so than Mac as it really just helped me keep things clean and organized. And I don't get why Apple does that. It's like a whole extra step to completely close out some of the applications. So Windows takes it for that one. And so the 10th and final difference between the two, and I know this becomes very specific for which laptop you get, either an older model MacBook or just a different version of a Windows laptop. But this Windows laptop, the Surface Book 2, has both a backspace and a dedicated delete button while my MacBook Pro only has like a backspace button, which is called delete. So it doesn't have the capability of deleting backwards and forwards with different buttons. You actually have to use like a keyboard shortcut to do that. But it was just muscle memory and built into me that when I had to like delete text forward, I would just go to the top right corner on my Surface Book 2, delete, 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 and it would go forward. And if I wanted to delete backwards, use the backspace button and it would delete backwards. And then with the MacBook, there is no dedicated delete key. As with the newer MacBooks, they have the touch ID button, which is fair, it's fine, I understand that. But still, just coming from a workflow where I would use the delete button all the time, now I either have to use a keyboard shortcut or I have to use the arrow keys and move forward and then backspace it. It's just something that I wasn't really fully like mentally prepared for and it's just like hard to kind of come over that after using it for like five years in a row, that delete button, it's just like muscle memory. So throughout my transition phase from Windows to Mac OS, those are the 10 biggest things that I noticed between the two. So again, I'm not like a hardcore computer user. I would say I'm like slightly above average, but just like those little things that I've noticed that I would say apply to a lot of just general consumers out there, this video might be able to help you understand what the transition is like and some things that you might encounter yourself. So with that being said, that's gonna be the end of this video. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this, then please like and subscribe as it helps me out a lot. And with that being said, have a great day everyone and cheers.